Hi guys! Today I'm going to be demonstrating this pet portrait of a dog done in ink tents. Now as you can see, I have changed my method from my previous ink tents portraits. In the past I had colored out the whole thing with the ink tents pen pencils and then added water on top, which as I said before took forever. And doing it this way by using the paintbrush and painting on the color first, I found that I could get the background in a lot quicker. Now this is a white dog in white snow, and I know you've all heard the joke about the polar bear and a snowstorm being just a blank sheet of paper, but I really wanted to capture the fact that white isn't just white, it has a lot of color in it. There's quite a lot of color, both in the dog and the snow itself. So I use a lot of blue to get the, the shadow in for the snow because it's reflecting the blue color of the sky, and that's where most of the blue and the shadow is coming from. For the fence, I layer down just a basic light brown color, and then I come on top with d darker colors. Then after that dries, I'll add a bit more color on top of that. Once I have a general idea of what the background is going to look like, I start working on the dog. And in general, I like to get the eyes in first, just to, so it doesn't look really creepy when I'm painting or drawing it. Now you'll notice that I am using the paintbrush to do some of the basic color. But the biggest problem that I had with this piece was that I didn't carry that far enough. You'll see a little bit later that I do use quite a bit of the pencils to do the, the color. And then I come on top of the color with water thinking to blend that out. But because the pencils become so dark after you add water to them, it became a lot darker than what I had anticipated and then I had to compensate for that by coming back on top with more of the white. So that's something to keep in mind if you're using ink tents. The ink tents pencils will change to a darker color after you add water to them and it's kind of unpredictable unless you've had a lot of experience which um, this is a medium that I'm still learning so that was a really unfortunate lesson to learn with this piece. Um, and yeah, as you can see, that's way, way too dark, very dark. So I was able to lighten it up with the, the white intense block there, but then I lost a lot of my contrast. So I had to like keep coming back and it was like a, a fight between going too light and too um, non-distinct and then trying to bring back the contrast, but not going too dark. So I think in the future, the way that I will avoid that problem will be to mix up my color beforehand on my little, um, I guess, the little lid that you see me using as a palette. Mix up the color first and then paint on the general colors first and get that most of the way to where I want it to be. And then I'll come on top with the pencils to do the final details. So after I added the white, I didn't like how gray it looked, so I added a bit of yellow. And then I didn't really like the yellow, so I added purple on. Well, right now I'm adding a bit of orange and um, other colors as well, just trying to like add that into the fur. But I didn't like how that looked, so I did a wash of purple over top of that. And that ended up making everything dark, and you'll see that in a second here. Yeah, so there's that purple, and I mean it looks it looks a lot better. You can always use a complementary color to, um, I guess alter things. So if your picture looks too yellow, you can add purple. If your picture looks too orange, you can add blue. If it's too blue, you can add orange. Um, complementary colors are really useful like that, but you just have to watch that you're not going too dark where you don't want to be going too dark. So now that I have 
the color basically where I want, to, want it to be for the dog, I add in uh, some highlights in the fur and white flecks of snow with the white jelly roll pen. And then I add just a little bit more contrast. And then when I finished that, I set it up against the far end of the room and I realized that the dog was way too dark in comparison to the background. So here I'm just darkening everything up in the background to, um, I guess, make the dog pop more from the background instead of just looking really dark. Just bringing back some of those details that I lost and that's about it. As you can see, it looks fine. I did panic quite a bit through the entire process, but um, it is possible to fix your mistakes as you're working. It's just better to plan ahead and that's what I'm gonna try to do with my, um, my future projects. So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.